Now, Nigeria's business environment has been faced with reforms and policies by President Buhari's administration. From 2015, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council is tasked with the reform that makes it easier to do business across the country. The improvements are expected to come in a form of reduction in cost, time and procedures in starting and running a business. The overall target at the commencement of the reforms was to improve Nigeria's ease of doing business ranking to the top 100. Since 2016, PEBEC has implemented reforms in three phases. National action plans, mainly along the eight core focus areas of the World Bank ease of doing business ranking. To put this into perspective, I have an economic analyst from Abuja, Dr. Emeka Okengo, who joins me uh, from Abuja. Uh, we also have Chief Executive Officer who will be joining us later of Kauri Assets Limited, Johnson Chuku, to speak on the same topic. Glad to have you join us, uh, Dr. Okengo. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, Doctor, let, let, let's start. A, a lot of issues has been brought up now uh, with regards to the president-elect and expectations from the business community. Uh, in your terms, we start this way. What are your expectations? We many have talked about serious, some strict and some um, very solid economic policy moves. What do you think? What should be the quick fix as we move on? Thank you very much. Uh, now this is coming from Lagos uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce. I want to first congratulate uh, the people of Lagos and the uh, governor-elect. Uh, I think they're starting on a good note. Uh, it's a good thing that uh, the major challenger has called to congratulate him. Uh, moving on to the topic at hand, uh, I think what's, what key is for us to be able to focus on the key areas. I mean, the, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce mentioned ease of doing business. Uh, they mentioned the African uh, Free Trade uh, Charter. Uh, they mentioned the uh, National Road Bill. Uh, they mentioned ICT support for business growth. Uh, but it's important that we, we realize and recognize that this is not a new government. You know? And uh, uh, the president-elect has come out to reiterate that he was still going to be focused on you know, reinvigorating the economy and uh, getting us back into uh, doing things the way things are supposed to be done. So. Uh, having also said that, it's also important that we take into cognizance that uh, you just don't make uh, suggestions and then governments begin to run with it. We also run with statutes. And whatever is not captured uh, in a budget or policy program uh, or policy documents, it usually would come in as an idea. So what, what will worry us or what we should focus on are those issues that we that has been captured already uh, in the budget, in the policy document of government. And for me, I think government has, is focused on the uh, ease of doing business. You know, they, they're not unrelenting in it. And uh, the Ministry of uh, Industry has done so much to that effect that uh, our rankings in uh, uh, the international scale of uh, ease of doing business has improved. Uh, two, uh, government has also helped on the road infrastructure, which was what the LCCI was also trying to, you know, uh, bring to the fore. Uh, again, uh, uh, he, they talked about the custom service and uh, the need for the custom service. I think if we, if we put in the ICT component of what it is that ease of business is all about, it's going to ease it a lot. So in, in one word, yes, it's a good thing they have done. Uh, two, it's important for us to reiterate that this is not a new government. It's, uh, it's uh, the same thing. I mean, government didn't change at the level of uh, Lagos vis-a-vis -vis the party that won the elections. It didn't also change at the federal level you know, vis-a-vis -vis the party that's also in power. All right. Now, Doctor, let, let, let's look at this. Uh, many say there's this uncertainty, uh, talking about investors' confidence in Nigeria. We see what is happening in the stock market and also the economy at large. When do you think that this confidence will actually return to Africa's most populous uh, nation? It, well, you must, you must also look at what's also happening to the bonds, to the Nigerian bonds. Uh, like you're losing money from the stock market, you're also gaining. People are also, you know, uh, the bonds, the, the green bonds, the, the, the sukuk bonds, most of the bonds are, are actually, you know, earning currency. Uh, for the investor confidence, money, like I keep telling people, is a coward. Uh, the moment we finish with uh, the business of politics and uh, like everybody will say, uh, politics is over, it's all about governance now. Uh, the moment you have that enabling environment and people know that their monies are safe, 
And, and this will happen, you know, when uh, losers and winners come together to say, okay, fine, it's time to put a stop on politics. And then those of us who want to go to court can go to court. And then they don't begin to now, you know, uh, infringe on, on, uh, on their governance. I think the investor confidence, I don't think it was lost to start with. I think what people just uh, did was that people cautiously, you know, took away their investment and I think it will return. It's happened over a period of, uh, most of the times, you know, we'll have elections, uh, uh, national elections, you find out that there's a dip in the stock market and then the moment, you know, uh, confidences are returned, you know, uh, maybe afraid nerves are a little bit, uh, uh, settled, it will come back. I am very, very optimistic that, you know, the, 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 the stock exchange, the stock market will grow back again. Now, indeed, uh, we also talk about industrializing our country and um, manufacturing sector is very important, key, uh, talking about actualizing this. Now, with the figures trickling in, you know, from the NBS and also other agencies, data agencies, would you say the manufacturing sector is moving on the right direction? No, because, you know, we don't have a manufacturing sector that is supported by a real sector. You know, that, this is where we have, you know, what you might be able to call the disconnect. You, you find out that most of the things that we use in our manufacturing sector are, you know, goods, finished goods that we import as raw materials. I think that is where the challenge is. Uh, because I, I believe that it's because we've not been able to focus on our real sector to be able to grow what you might be able to call our industrial raw materials needs. And this is where our mining sector comes in. Uh, this is where what you might also call our technology you know, capacities come in. This is where uh, our even agricultural uh, sector comes in. Because a lot of the things that you use in manufacturing, you know, or your textiles actually come from either the mining sector or the agricultural sector. So if we focus on it and then uh, we are not depending so heavily on the importation of uh, raw materials, which actually comes in here as a finished goods. And 80% of the times you're even competing, you know, with those who, are, you know, who you're buying these raw materials for, you know, uh, uh, to even finish your goods into products that can get into the market. I think that's the major challenge that the manufacturing sector has. It, it, the moment we are able to link it, you know, with the uh, raw materials base and then probably support it with our locally grown technologies, I, I think, again, uh, we might be able to be having some traction in that, in that direction too. Well, my next question is kind of well, still related to what we, actually, what we are discussing. Infrastructure gap remains also very important if we are to industrialize and also achieve uh, the benefits of the, of the economic recovery and growth plan. And here comes public-private partnership. We tried to work some deals out with China earlier last year. Uh, what would you say, what's your assessment, even um, the currency, uh, the trade deal, you know, and, and all of that with China, uh, you know, what would you say, how far have we gone with this? Some say it's a step in the right direction. Well, see, Some say it, we've really it's, not it's, actually it's good benefited spoke from this. It's good you spoke about infrastructure. You must be able to, there are two ways you develop infrastructure. You either make it demand driven, okay, or uh, you make it political. Uh, the moment you begin to build political infrastructure, 80% uh, of the time is then this disconnect deepens. But if you make your infrastructure demand-driven, what do I mean by demand-driven infrastructure? Uh, you don't build roads that are not used for anything. You don't, uh, you don't put the lights where they are not needed. You don't build energy plants where they are not needed. But the moment you are building, you know, based on some bottom, you know, up, up approach, okay, you have uh, probably... A, 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 an industry uh, that, or you, a raw material base that you must be able to open up that now brings out your, indo your, your raw materials that can be able to support industry and then that industry is being supported by energy and then that energy you know, now supports the goods that now enter into markets and then you have an off-taker program. But unfortunately in Nigeria you find out that because we don't have a holistic national development program, 80% of the times uh, we, we place, we put more of social infrastructure than we look at critical infrastructure. And then what we call uh, market infrastructure, you know, might now become what you might call the front end. And then we do not focus on the back end, which are the criticals. Those dead roads into, into uh, your farm areas, those irrigation programs that should be able to tie to your dams, uh, those uh, transportation programs that should be able to, you know, lead to your storage facilities. The moment you have these things integrated, 
then you find out that it becomes a lot easier for you to be able to plan a proper funding you know, for the infrastructure. So I think uh, in, in, in just a nutshell, we have more of uh, a, a, a disaggregation of what of our infrastructure development programs than we actually have the challenges of infrastructure supporting you know, what you call our growth. Finally, finally, do, do, doctor, let's look at access to credit for small and medium scale enterprises. They are the backbone of any economy and Nigeria should not be left out. How well are they aware, are getting funds? BOI is there, Bank of Agriculture is there, even the central bank has been coming up with funds, but some are not even aware. The, the funds, remember that these funds are not, are not free funds. Uh, what 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 should what what we should focus on is actually making certain that you know the, the, uh, the entrepreneurs become credit worthy, and and one way they can become credit worthy is to be able to develop what you call you know bankable feasibility programs that show clearly you know how monies that are put into their businesses can be returned, okay what you call uh, a return on uh, investment, but you know a lot of us you know a lot of these banking institutions you know lend monies blindly. Uh, and this is why a lot of the lending that happens in our country is very heavily collateralized. I think what we should focus on, instead of now looking for access to credit, uh, I think we should be able to look for, you know, uh, building the capacities of, uh, of uh, local entrepreneurs, you know, to be able to assess what you might be able to call non-toxic credit. You know, credit that is, you know, well uh, spelled out, well understood, where you now have where the inputs are going to come from, where the output should be, you know, at what period of times, you know, this credit will take. But when you, what we have basically is that you now have us, you know, train money at projects. Okay, uh, you have uh, 1,000 or 1,000 farmers, let's support them with X, Y, Z. And then without any understanding of what a high credit works, you begin to, you know, lend them money. And a lot of the times, you know, they find, they think that this is free money or money that they can be able to spend and, it's, if you look at uh, a return on uh, credit or loans, it's, it's very, 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 it's very marginal. In wow. fact, some, some will tell you that if they make a 30% uh, recovery, that, that, that's a good deal. And this is happening because we've not been able to understand that it is not credit that is the most important aspect you know, of entrepreneurship. It is building you know, what you call a proper business case you know, uh, situation where you, know, you have an understanding of what your back ends are, you know, vis-a-vis -vis inputs, what your front end are, vis-a-vis -vis probably what you might call your machinery, and then oh. most importantly, your markets, and then pricing. Dr. Emeka Okengwa, thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me.